user profile. What you should be seeing is the profile of the user. Psychologically, what you should be seeing is the profile of the user. And then when you tap on user profile, what you are seeing is probably you are seeing maybe about the app. You are seeing about the app. Fine, you guys, the designer, the designer must have done that and the developer must have code the work and they don't really pay attention to it. But then the fourth might actually become from the information architecture because they didn't really, I, uh, 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 they didn't really, really uh, uh, do the, 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 the information, the, the, the information content, like the way they arrange, the way they structured it wasn't structured normally. So the fourth is coming from information architecture. So hence, information architecture is actually, it's actually a, 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 a jammy part of your, of your user experience process. It's actually a jammy part of your user experience process because, Okay, someone has asked me if there's some slide. No, I don't have any slide, but I will share my screen as soon as when I want to design information architecture for you guys. I'll share my screen. So, information architecture, uh, like I said, it doesn't, it, it's the structure that you are going to be following while you are actually working on a particular product. That's information architecture is about. Okay, fine. A lot of people actually missed up information architecture with user flow, with user journey. User flow or user journey, it's just the journey that a particular user is going to perform when they come to the product. Oh, but then there's, a, there, there, there's actually a thin line difference between user journey and information architecture. A lot of people miss the two together. Like I said, information architecture is the virtual hierarchy, the virtual hierarchy of what users are going to perform when they come to your product. From about, as you see, as you see, okay, we're at that point, maybe profile, I see about, about, about me on the profile, and that will buy, oh, that about me, I'll be able to see my first name, last name, probably my password, blah, 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 whatever. That is the hierarchy of the of the information that is supposed to be on the on that particular page, that's I. But user flow, user, uh, user flow, uh, user flow on its own is just the flow itself, just the flow that user is going to perform when they come to oh when they come to this particular product, they are going to be seeing their profile page, they are going to see their contact us, they are going to. See. Those are the user flow that you guys you know, users are going to be seeing on the particular flow. So now going back to uh, uh, I know a lot of this is a Figma community, so I'm still certain that virtually majority of us here. Are familiar with Figma? I don't know if I have anybody that's not, is not used to Figma. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear. You. Yeah, I'm trying to ask a question. I don't know if anybody is not familiar. With... Okay, 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 okay. Nice one. Okay. So going back, going. Let me. I'll be. Share, let me try and share my screen as regards to use uh, Figma. Or I won't be able to use my own here. Yeah? Oh, whimsical since the Figma community. Come here. Okay. Yeah, I think I share my screen now. So Figma has Figma has a particular template uh, that they use for information architecture. Like me, why if if you are a designer, if we choose if we don't want to use FigJam, you can make use of uh, Milo, you can use Blasamic, you can use Musico, uh, you can use Milano to do your information architecture. It doesn't necessarily need for you to use a uh, 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 Figma, but then uh, Figma already uh, uh, Figma already make it so simpler for designers. Uh, you don't need to kill yourself about information architecture when it comes to design. Like even with your paper and pencil, you can actually use information architecture. Like you can do your, you can do your information architecture with your paper and pencil. You don't need to kill yourself about probably you need. Uh, 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 Figma, you need Figjam, you need whatever, whatever to actually produce information architecture. The major thing is that are you actually producing the structures of the information that's to be contained in your product? Are you are you producing the structure very well? That is the major thing you need in your information architecture. Are you producing the structure very well? Like if you should be producing a particular, if like I keep on saying, oh, I open, look, just look at the way I open my Figma. I open Figma, I, I go to search and I see what I'm looking for. That is the structure, like from search, I should be able to see information architecture, or I should be able to search for a particular content that I'm looking for. And then when I tap on it, you should be able to take it to another page. That is the way, that means they've actually structured everything one after the other. You will see, it's not as if probably when I tap on search, it takes me back to home. No, it didn't, it didn't take me back to home. 
So if 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 I actually type on search and it takes me back to home, at that point your information architecture is actually faulty. There's not there, there's not any orderliness in the hierarchy in the design. There's not any orderliness in the hierarchy. So looking at what Figma has said for us, they said home page. This telling you that this is the home, this is the home. So the other hierarchy, like it's moving from the top to the bottom. You're going to move from the top to the bottom. That is the order of hierarchy. So you have the home page now. On the home page now, that means that, that on that particular home page, you can have the about, the recipes, the video, and the grocery list. That is what you are having. This is the, so now they did tell you that from the home page, you are going to be have, having probably a, a shop list. No. Like, how did you jump from home page to shop list? It's, it's wrong. You can't just jump from home page to shop list because it doesn't follow a particular order like like just picture like home page and then you have the shop list like how did the shop list get to that point how did the shop list get to that point so th that is that is the structure that we are talking about so you can see that here now they talk about 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 when you tap on that about what do you want to see what are users going to actually be interacting with they're going to be seeing the press kit the case story the recipes the workout the community and then ordinary hero that's what users are going to be seeing when they tap on that particular page. Now, on the press kit, what do we, what do they need to see? What do they need to see when they come to press kit? <clears throat> they are going to be able to download the full video, download the logo, or probably download the app uh, uh, screen or whatever, whatever that they want. They just it and then down to contact. On this same contact, now you can still have another another, another social lights like this. Probably maybe contact. Okay, uh, uh, email address, phone number. And then, uh, 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 yeah, email address, phone number, um, maybe probably your, your physical address. And even on the physical address again, they can still have another flow because it's like a subset to each of them. The physical address now, I can be like, oh, I say maybe probably uh, uh, 214, 214, maybe Ikoyi or something like that. That is the subset of my physical address. And remember, my physical, ad my physical address is subset of contacts. My contact is a subset of of about you can see so it's hierarchy i won't just move from about now to just go to maybe probably my physical address it doesn't work like that that is that's but it's coming to the bar it's going to give you a bad ux anyway it's going to give you a bad ux it doesn't work like that so you should be able to give it an order of hierarchy when it comes to your user uh, 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 sorry, so you suspend. Let me come to information architecture. So, the difference between, let me go back again. The difference between information architecture and user journey that user journey now, you don't really need to be in an hierarchy. User journey doesn't need to be in a hierarchy or, or, or in, a, in an order. It's just the journey that the particular user is going to perform when they come to a, 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 a your product. And that's why, in most cases, when you are working with some developer, probably you're working on an agile methodology, they might not actually give you information architecture to work with, they'll just give you a, a user flow. What you have to do is to tell that this is what this product is all about. So you just go and follow up with your, with your design. That's just you have to But when it comes to the project architecture, it actually guides the designer on each and every steps you need to take while you are working on a particular product or you are trying to come design a particular product. So I don't know if there's any questions regarding the project architecture before I move or I proceed to the next one. Is there any question? Hello. Check the chat. Check the chat. Someone said, so I'm not familiar. Uh, I'm familiar with say some familiar with Jam. And someone said, what's the difference between uh, information? Probably Lagos to Ibadan or probably Lagos to Portacot. I don't, I'm sorry if you're not from Nigeria, but uh, I'm a Nigerian. I, I think I, I usually I'm familiar with. So probably you're actually traveling from Lagos to Portacot or Lagos to Ibadan. You probably move from Ikeja, like you're going by land, you move from Ikeja, you take Ojota, and then you start driving towards Ibadan. So that is the journey. But now the information architecture now is the, is, the, is the hierarchy, like you have to start from your house first. You have to leave your house. If you didn't leave your house, you can't go to Ajota. If you didn't get to Ajota, you can't get to Ibadan. So that is the hierarchy. So as related to the product now, like, like I said earlier, you yeah. tap on About Us, you tap on About Us page. On About Us page, probably I will see About Ayoli, uh, 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 probably your first name, your last name, your address. And then before I get to that About Us, probably it's from setting. 
maybe from the home page, user tap on setting. On the setting, they see about us. On the about us, they now see your detail, your, your avatar, your first name, your last name, and the likes. So now, the point is that uh, users, users do not jump from probably from the home page to just see the about us page. That is not how the flow works for that particular product. Don't quote me wrong. I'm not saying you cannot have on a particular app, you cannot have probably your menu. One of the menus should just be your about us. You can have it. I'm talking it in terms of uh, information architecture, how you structure your stuff, your, your design. You can't be having, you can't have about us, you can't have about us, and then you, you say, uh, and then you say you don't have probably the first name, the last name, or probably like users are jumping or users is going to be moving from. Let me say the home page, and then they just jump. They don't. They just, they just jump down to the, down to the about uh, about us. Like it doesn't work like that. It has to follow an algorithm and an hierarchy order. That is why uh, 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 information architecture is actually refers to as an hierarchy order in design. Okay. And um, someone says it's not familiar with Fig Jam. I, I think I answer your question, Dixia Kumari. So if I'm not pronouncing your name very well. Uh, for Olua Shino Ola Moyegun, you said you are not actually familiar with Figma, but can I know? Are you familiar with Figma? Olua Shino. Hello. Uh, can can they speak? Can the uh, users speak? Sorry. Can the attendees speak? They can only use the chats. They can't speak. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, Olua Shino, you say you're not familiar with Figma. Uh, yeah. The point is, uh, I don't. This this class is not actually uh, uh, meant for to talk about figure. Okay, but this is how you use your figure. Figure like most of the most of I think I think I think most of US design tools are the most simplest to use. Like like compared to other other design industry, uh, when it comes to animator or or you storyteller and like those guys that use Illustrator, Photoshop. Uh, like I think Figma makes everything so simpler for anybody to use. Like. Even a, a, a DO child, you can just tell a DO child to just do one or two things. He, he or she will be able to navigate yourself using Figma or, or using Figma. So the only thing you need to do is your tools are down here. The tools you use, they are down here. If you are picking, if this is your, this is your pick tool, why this is your holding tool? Like if you're not using, I think if probably you are using an external mouse or something like that, you can actually use this stuff to be moving around your, your software. You can use this to move. This is your marker. You use this to draw, or probably you need to make a signature. That's a marker. So, and then uh, the next thing you have here is you have your sticky notes. So, you yeah, need to make sure you have your sticky notes or your eclipse here, which are your shapes. Sorry, your shapes. For me, you can actually add different uh, different type of shape and you can color your shape. Like you can add text inside it, you can see I'm adding text inside it, and then you can actually change the shape from here. Yeah, just a drop down menu will give you a whole lot of shapes. You can change the color as well. Can change the color to any other color of your choice. You can see the way I'm changing the color, it's changing. I can move this again, just drag and drop. Everything about Figma is just only drag and drop. And then next you have your sticky notes. That is for probably mm, not for uh, that is for uh, probably if you're actually working on a project whereby oh you need to from addition stage, from your addition stage, you talk about your sticky notes. So you have that there, and then they have a lot of other features here like product roadmap. Probably that's for product managers that you can actually import. They talk about user persona. That is if we are using you, if you are going to be using Figma to do your user persona. I think your tomorrow trainer is going to be talking about user persona. Or probably your, your past trainer has talked about user persona. So you have you can actually use this for user persona. That is a persona, personifying your user, your, your user towards the product you are actually building. And then you talk about from architecture, which is like I can actually get another template from here. Then this is the test. For you to type just a not too much. And then these are your connector arrows for you to connect from probably one particular element to another. And that is how they come up with this particular structure. I think that is actually okay. I don't know if anybody's having a question again. So moving forward now. So I, I think I, I I have actually talked about the information architecture and then the the the, the relevance to it in user UX design, like I said, you need information architecture in US design. You are building products to solve users' problem. Now we are not concerned about the aesthetics of the product, which is UI. We're concerned about the users' problem that you are trying to solve. So why should that come to your products and then got uh, probably I got lost? Like I click on a bot or I click on maybe payments. I'm expecting to see probably how to make payments. 
but then I think on payment has something else. So at that point, it's not actually the problem or it's not actually the fault of the UI guy that did the work. The problem is coming from the user experience person that did the version architecture. So the, the implication is that if you get your, if if you are getting your information architecture wrong, obviously you might end up building the wrong products. That's not that you might not be able to solve the problem you are supposed to build or the pop the product you, or the problem you are built to solve if you are getting your information architecture wrong. So it is imperative to actually get it right. And also, information architecture is actually the point, to actually bridge the gap between the users that you have make research about, you personify them, and you do a lot of stuff you've done in your in your in your in your empathizing and, and ideation phase. So information architecture actually bridge that gap between that to your aesthetics. Information architecture bridge the gap between your users researching and aesthetics because the point is that after your information architecture, you are more like concerned about the aesthetics of the product. So and then that's why from information architecture you talked about your wireframes. So with that, I'll, I'll go into the wireframes now. So what are wireframes? What are wireframes? I always say something like when I'm, whenever I teach my students, for I always say something like wireframe is just like a, a framework. When you have a wireframe, just remember framework. There are a lot of uh, uh, wireframe stuff online. Like uh, I, I used to use a paper then back then, 2019. As you use the paper to do my wireframe. The same thing. And another thing, okay, let me just tell you guys here. The point is that, like, in the US industry, in the US design industry, fine, there are a lot of software that you can use to actually make your work easier. But I feel it's, this, it's, it's even better you try and start with paper and pencil. Paper and pencil. The only thing you cannot do with paper and pencil, even your user research, even your user research, you can still use paper and pencil to do your user research because. Imagine you're actually conducting a particular product. So imagine you're actually building a particular product that actually entails you to do some physical interview. I don't know the job they did. Job 2000, that is 3000. It's okay. Job one, one, five. One, five. Plus 1000, that is um, um, 2000. 3000, it was 1000. Okay. Uh, 4, the job there for money? No, that one's a job. Okay. Go now, one's me a job. Then plus 800 plus 500, that is. 800 plus 500 is Hello, are you there? Oh, sorry. I, I think I think I got muted when that guy when that guy was talking. When did when did you guys when last you guys hear, hear for me? Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. So when did when did when did when did I stop? Like, let me know to go back. Okay, stop at the um, wireframe. The wireframe is like a framework. When describing oh, wow. it. Oh, okay, yeah, I said wireframe is like a framework to a particular design, a particular structure that you're seeing. Most of the structure you see today, even this particular uh, 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 software, this particular uh, 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 platform uh, Figma is actually adopting, they actually have a wireframe to it. Wireframe is like a, it's a, it's like a structure towards what you want to do, like, like a guide, like a guide towards how the interface will look like. That is what the wireframe is all about. It's a guide towards what the interface will look like. So now, when it comes to the wireframe, there's, there, there's actually, like I, I was actually talking about, you don't need to kill yourself when it comes to wireframing. The choice of the tools that you want to use based on the designer. You can actually use a paper and pencil to sketch a wireframe as it suits you. And then you can use a software. Probably you can use Mimico, you can use Mimico, you can use Blasamic, you can use Miller Notes, and you can still use Figma or Figjam or SD or Invision, whatever, any tools that actually suits you, you can use to produce a wireframe. But then it's not actually a benchmark. What major the major thing wireframe is that where is your nav bar going to be? 
Where is your home icon is going to be? Where is your avatar going to be? What about your carousel? Where is it going to be? Hero session, where are they? That is the major thing that you need to consider when it comes to wireframes. So that's why I said that it provides a guide or a frame. And that is where the, I, I think, I think that's even that where the frame comes in, where they adopt the name wireframe. I think that's where the frame comes in because it's like a guide, it's like a frame, a framework towards how the interface should look like. That is what wireframe is all about. So in wireframing, wireframe is, is, different, is, is divided into three, into three parts. We have the low fidelity wireframing, we have the mid fidelity wireframing, and we have the high fidelity wireframing. Yeah. Some of us might be hearing the word mid fidelity for the first time, but uh, there's something like mid fidelity. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people actually boycott the mid fidelity. They just jump from low fidelity and then go to the high fidelity. And also, a lot of people doesn't really know the difference between low fidelity where I'm filming and a mid fidelity where I'm filming. There's actually a difference between low fidelity and mid fidelity where I'm filming. Let me let, 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 let me let me let me let me let me share my screen and show you what we are filming. Different type of those where are frames coming. I, okay, I'm supposed to share my, let me share my screen here. Where's this project I was working on? Where's our, what's up here? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, we can see your screen. Oh, okay. I think it's off now. Come again. Oh, it's off. Okay, yeah, let me share it. It's went off now. Sorry. sorry for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to actually give the difference between a wireframe, like I said. There are three different types of wireframe, but then they are they're actually, they're actually simple. Like, they're easy to get. When you see, okay, when you see something like this, this is a wireframe. Can you see my screen? This is a wireframe itself. This is a wireframe itself. But this is a mid fidelity wireframe. This is a mid fidelity wireframe. Like most of what you are seeing there is mid fidelity wireframe, where you don't have the images. It's actually mid fidelity wireframe. So the low fidelity wireframe that you guys, like a lot of people, actually missed up together is I you have your design. Oh, let me say I have my frame like this. Let me use, uh, where's the frame? Uh, let me use it's on five. So if I have something like this, yeah. Also like this here, and then I want to design probably a, 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 an onboard session, an onboard session that actually have, uh, let me use that actually have an image or an avatar. So I look like this. Then if if I'm having so okay, let me have it like this. So I'm using my, and then I duplicate it, and then I think that is should be 45. So I have that, I can group it together. So if I want to make it as component, but I'm not interested in that now. And then my text should be represented as lines. My text should be represented as line. So I have text like this, duplicate it, okay. move it down, move it down. So I have my text like this, Say, I don't know, probably I, I have a content beneath this, beneath, beneath this particular stuff here, this particular image here. And then I have my next button. Let's say I want to have my, my okay, let me say I want to have another test. It's just an onboarding screen. Let's say I want to have another test here. I can decide to move, I can decide to make this as two and then make this as three. I can start to make this as two and then make this as three. So the point is that on my button, I want to have a next button. Let me just use the same particular stuff as my next button, as my next button or my next icon. Use this as this, next, and also probably this as back, yeah? So this is a low fidelity wire filming. In low fidelity wire filming, you represent your text as lines. In low fidelity wire filming, you represent your text as lines. And you have your image, you have your image, your button and the likes as rectangle with either two line crossing it or you represent like this. That is the standard of a low fidelity wire framing. It is not expected that your low fidelity wire should contain any content, be it uh, color 
or whatever, whatever, or probably you have text. No, your little video you are filming should be your just your the, the, the film. Now, looking at this now, you definitely a, a user and staff designer will definitely can tell that this is an image, this is a text, but then he doesn't even know the text. He doesn't know everything about it, he doesn't know what's happening, but he knows that this is an image, this is a text. You know that this is a button or probably an image, which is an icon, but he doesn't know anything about what is happening. But that is the low fidelity way of framing. So this is what gave birth to the mid fidelity way of framing. This gave birth to the mid fidelity way of framing. Remember, a user interface designer that is going to be working with this, we still have the information architecture. We still have the information architecture with them. So this gave back to the mid fidelity. So for your mid fidelity way of framing now, you transport this to this. You have this. So your mid fidelity way of framing now, your text, at this point now, you need to add text to the design. You need to add, so that's why you need to change this to your text and then change this to, again to text. That is your mid fidelity way of framing. You need to change, you need to add text. So the major difference between a mid fidelity and a low fidelity way of framing is text. Like the low fidelity doesn't have any text, doesn't have anything. Just black, blue, blue, just black or white, or the normal probably you want to use, but just mostly two colors, either blue or white, red or white, whatever, whatever. But it's always not having text, not having any images. That is what your low fidelity way of filming is all about. But then, for your mid fidelity way of filming, you are talking about adding images to the design. So when you talk about your mid fidelity way of filming, you talk about adding content. That is your text to the design that you are actually working on. Or probably I have. Okay, something like this as my probably let me just increase it to semi, semi boot and then increase the font to let me say thin and then i have the text under it probably like two line text let me reduce this to regular and then take it back to 12. then i have my text under it like that like let's say like this so at this point now Talk too much. That's that's with my show. So at this point now, I'm actually referring. To, I'm actually talking about the uh, 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 low fidelity framing. So after this point now, you're not talking about your high fidelity way of framing. The high fidelity way of framing is actually what you guys actually refer to as high fidelity mockups, and that is why at that point they call it high fidelity mockups. It is a mockups because that is what that the mockup is what you are sending to your developer. Your mockup is not. It's not. Uh, 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 your mockup is not when uh, you actually. So I'm coming. What's happening? Your mockup is not. Your mockup is not actually when when uh, you put your design on the mockup and then you 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 upload to uh, let me say. Uh, Beans or Dribble. That is not the mockup. Your mockup start from this point. Uh, where is this stuff? Your mockup start from this. Okay, this design is a mockup. This design is a mockup itself. But then I didn't put it on the I didn't put the design on 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 uh, any frame. Probably I didn't go and use maybe an Apple frame or something. But it's a mockup. So this is where your mockup start from. So now they call this high fidelity design. They even refer to high fidelity prototyping or high fidelity mockups. And if you remember, they did, you you can never low fidelity. There's another thing about low fidelity prototyping as well. You can still have low fidelity prototyping for the case of or for the sake of usability testing. For the sake of usability testing. It is actually imperative or it's actually necessary that you test your you test your 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 your, your mid fidelity design before you pass on to high fidelity design. Why? Because changes that are supposed to be adopted should have been done when you are working on your wireframes. That is your mid fidelity or low fidelity. And it's also expected that the changing in wireframe always come in as the product proceeds or as the product grows. There's definitely going to be changes. And these changes need to go, need to start from the wireframe itself before we move into the high fidelity design. It is as well that anything you are doing your high fidelity design, like anything you are going to be doing your high fidelity design, it's already superb. Like it's already unique. If you're going to be doing anything on high fidelity design, it's already super, it's already unique. So it, it is at that point, at that point, you are not actually like it's not expected to be changing anything in your high fidelity design. Everything you are going to be changing should have be coming back from your low fidelity design. So in the industry, changes keep on going on your low fidelity design, either low or the mid, any, any one that you adopt. And then your usability testing, you use your wireframe as well to actually conduct testing. In, in, in some industries, some industry, they employ usability tester to come and test that product for you. And then those guys are actually working with something like this. They are working with something like, they are not even seeing the aesthetics of the product. In that case, they're not actually, talk, they're not actually concerned about 
the 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 the, the aspects of the product. They are concerned about the functionality of the product. So your wire framing is supposed to be giving you the V functionality of the product. Where should my avatar be? Where should my button A be? Where should my button B be? What is the difference between button A and button B? All these are what I should have been considered or should have been considered if you are actually talking about your wire framing. So going back to your IVD wire framing, like I said, it's your IVD wire framing is just the, just the beauty of the product itself. It just sorry. I don't really have any product here that I can actually show to you guys because most of my products here are uh, no disclosure. So I, I don't really have anything I can show people here. Most of the product here are no disclosure. So your, your affiliate will have me, but just the normal design, I'm so certain that everybody actually know what affiliate will have me is. It's the normal design that you guys design and you post, uh, you, you put on your dribble or your beans or, or anywhere that you want to showcase your work. That's your IVH wire framing. And that one should be coming last. That is after you must have gotten your first one, which is low fidelity. You must have gotten the second one, which is the mid fidelity. That high fidelity wire framing should be coming last. And also, before you start your high fidelity wire framing, there's something you need to do, you need to do your, 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 your design system, which entails your style guide. At that point, you should communicate with the, with the brand identity designer that actually designed the, brand, the, the product branding, probably the logo, the typography, and the likes. You as you as a UI guy, and also like I forgot to uh, to talk some further. Okay, where frame two is actually the the the, the, the middle ground. Where frame is actually the middle middle ground between the user interface designer and the user experience designer. This where frame is the middle ground. But unfortunately, most of the jobs that we see outside today are uh, like UI US UI US UI US. In a good setting, in a good company, in a big environment. A UI guy does their own work separate, a US guy does their own separate. Though they work synergy together, but then they have different things they have different things that they are doing. A US person finish their work at this point. A user experience person finish their work at this particular point at your mid fidelity. That's where they finish their work. A UI guy is the one starting it from high fidelity. That's what the UI guy is doing. So before that UI guy will do the high fidelity, the person needs to come up with the user persona, the person to come up with the app, sorry, that also user persona, sorry, the person to come up with the style guide or the design system before the UI person start in to come up with the style guide or the design system. So I, I, I don't know if there's any question uh, now. Uh, let me entertain question. Okay. Hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello. Yeah, but check the charts. Yeah, check the charts. I can send it on the chat too. You know, I think the question on the chat has been addressed. If you have question, you can drop your question on the on the, on the chat. The question on the chat has been addressed. Okay, someone is asking how important is mid fidelity wire framing. Okay, the point is that okay, mid fidelity wire framing, like mid fidelity wire framing, is actually important as the high fidelity and as the low fidelity. Though the reason why the reason why most uh, industry boycott it, or even like I will say that that is what they do the most, or just that they don't know. Users, like um, users, designers actually do mid fidelity wire framing the most. Self. Instead of they, they didn't know that I didn't mean fidelity wire, but they thought it's low fidelity wire frame. Like I just said, your low fidelity wire frame is just a rectangle with like crossing it, and then you represent your text as lines. That's your low fidelity wire frame, and your mid fidelity wire frame, like you are going to be having your text, your content there. So now looking back to what's uh, looking back to what most designers do, they have the second one, which is what me I first do as mid fidelity, but they call it low fidelity wire frame. So going back to your question now, it is actually like it's a wireframe, it's a framework. So it's actually important. It's as important as the high fidelity design itself. So it's actually an important step that you cannot actually uh, skip in your design process. Does that answer your question? Hello? Just be checking chat, you will see the I'm questions. Just, I'm, not see, I'm not seeing questions. any question in the chat there, like, or. Uh, let me something on. Are you not, you're not seeing? I'm not seeing. Check the general. Yeah. There's a check general. I'm on the general. The last question, the last question I saw here was different between user flow and functional architecture. That was the last question I saw. Um okay, there is other question. Somebody was say, asking 
are you going to talk about style guide okay that's a different topic no no no. i'm, I'm not talking about style guide yeah. like i said style guide should be coming i think your tomorrow trainer should talk about style guide tomorrow trainer is going to be talking about uh uh uh, uh. so what is tomorrow trainer talking about anyway whatever tomorrow trainer is supposed to do the stuff is it's it's an iterative process that's why they're saying in design thinking design thinking is referred to as iterative process it's a step-by-step -step process just be sure your almighty formula like for this like for this world that is my practice in primary or secondary school your almighty formula like it's a step that you used to carry you used to find the value of a on normal formula you can actually find the value of a you can find the value of b you can find the value of c i think those are two variables you can find the almighty formula so it's a step-by-step store that you used to find the value of a you find the value of y i think y2 so the same thing too in design too so your design thinking is like an almighty formula your design thinking is like a step-by-step -step guide that you that's why it's called an iterative process so you must finish a particular stuff before you can actually move to the next one so going back to the question the person is asking now before you start your i fidelity to your framing there must be a style guide or a design system that you need to use because at that point you need to be defining the logo you need to, sorry, you need to be defining the the, the 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 icon that is going to be used you need to be defining the the the, the, the typography that's going to be used you need to be defining the color that's going to be used in your design i think that's the question another question okay somebody was asking um high frame high, uh, high fidelity wireframe and visual design are they the same yeah, 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 yeah. The visual design, the visual design, the interaction design, and everything, they're all the high fidelity wireframe. But then there's different steps that they do call them. That they are at different st at different stages. They do call a different name. Like I said earlier, I said about I talked about high fidelity mockups. I talked about high fidelity wireframing. I talked about high fidelity prototyping. We're talking about high fidelity prototyping now. When you prototype your work, like you do your DIY wire, wire stuff, like you actually link a particular page to another, that's the prototyping. At that point, you're talking about high fidelity prototyping. The frame itself is the high fidelity wire frame. So, and then the interaction design is coming in where you're adding interactive. When your design is being interactive, you're adding color, you're adding elements, all those kind of stuff. That is when the interactive is coming into the design. So it's still the same thing. It's more like the same. Just that they have the, the, the terminologies are actually different. Like it's just a, a little, little, a little, little bit different from each other. Okay. Uh, someone is still asking, how do you get updated on the latest design trend? Because recruiters will be like, you are not updated. Okay. Um, for you to get updated on the latest on latest design trend is all about you being you be on your toe. Like currently now, I think Figma is actually making some updates, like they still need some updates to there as well on their stuff. So, like I think one of the one of the best ways that you sign up on a lot of platform, get to be getting the newsletter, most of most design platform majorly. Since you're a designer, you see, because your recruiter doesn't even know the trend. You are the one that told, you are the one that will tell the recruiter. What your recruiter knows is just the beautiful designs. That way they know. So your own is to for you to be for you to stay afloat and devote to sign up with a lot of platform, a lot of design platform. So that whenever they are dropping in their 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 their, their newsletter and the likes, you are receiving it. Then at least even on the headline, you already know oh, these guys are already doing this, these guys are already moving like this. And then on your own end, you need to step up your game. And something about in design, in the design does that you don't sleep. The day you start, you don't sleep and you keep on learning. The day you stop, the day you stop learning, you start dying. I used to tell some of my students that I teach, like uh, whenever, okay, you start your UI design today, after two months, you said you, you are tired, you cannot do it. Um, the point is that the day you stop learning, the day you start dying. So for you, you need to stay afloat, like you need to stay afloat in the industry to actually uh, uh, probably be getting the job or be getting the gig, you need to stay afloat and then follow the trend. And also social media, oh, probably go on Twitter, you follow follow trend. Don't just follow anybody on Twitter like you because you, because someone is posting, 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 doesn't mean that the person actually knows what is posting. You don't need to, you don't ensure and you want to actually fit out what you are following on Twitter. Like you need to fit out what you are following on Twitter, not even on Twitter on any social media platform, because the point is that you might even get saturated with a lot of confusion. Because this will post this, this will post that. You might get saturated with a lot of confusion. And the irony about it is that. Some stuff might even be done like oh, design wise is actually possible, but in, in implementation, it's not possible. So like it's let me just ship this one in as a designer, as a designer, you might actually consider 
having experience in front end as a plus. Like you don't need to know the front end, but in order to actually know the front end flow, there are lots, there are some books you can actually read on how front end flow works. You don't really need to open your uh, your visual code to be coding to be doing HTML or React. You don't need that. Just understand how front end flow works. So in that case, you can you will actually be a step ahead because you are, when you are designing, you actually understand how this particular process, how this particular flow will work when it comes to developers and this thing be achievable or not achievable. That's one. Secondly, as regards the trend, okay, fine. You can go, like I said, on social media, LinkedIn, and whatever, Beyond, Libu, you see what guys are doing, and then you go, oh, let me pick up this stuff. Let me be able to do it. So the best way is that, and also, you guys are in the community, Figma community, a lot of a lot of design community that you can actually join to actually get yourself acquainted to the latest trend in the industry. Don't sleep on it. Make friends as well. Make friends. Know what is happening. You don't have to stay idle, you don't have to stay in a silo or, or be inside your house to actually know what's happening. I think, does that answer the question? Hello? Yeah, the, the person said yes, that you have answered the question. And somebody is asking do you have any suggestion of this is not a front end class this is a design this is a design class because i'm saying front end is it like a front end developer or something no you don't you don't you don't need to be a front end developer as a designer it's not a requirement but then if you look at some job requirement if you look at some job jd they will tell you they will be talking about ability to actually uh, they will be like ability to actually do something on html css some jd Ask that the reason why they're asking that in the industry today, senior designers in the industry today, or some big boys, and um, let's say PM, shall let me use PM and developer, they are having issue with designers, and that's why you see that designer will say that they design something and developer will bring something else. It's because what you design is not achievable in developer in development, it's not because the developer doesn't have the experience or doesn't have probably the widget or whatever, whatever to use to actually come to it, but because you've actually designed what is not. So I said, that's why I said as a designer, it's actually imperative you have the experience. When I say you have the experience, it's like, I'm not saying you should know how to code. No, nobody cares about you knowing how to code as a designer. It's not part of your work. But then to understand how the development workflow, workflow works. I don't really have any books. Like I can, I can actually say for, I can actually, like I used to read some book back in 2019. I can just check for them and then probably drop it on, on, on the good chat for you people. Okay, so far there's no other questions. So a, a summary of everything you've talked about so far. Thank you. Okay, in summary, I talked about information architecture, which is the 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 the, 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 the of your of the information that you want to have on your product on an hierarchy manner, on an hierarchy order. That's the information architecture, step by step, from the top to the bottom. That information architecture is actually one of the simplest part of the OUX process. And then I talked about uh, 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 your wireframe, wireframe being the, 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 the framework or the guide to what you want to have or what you want to present in your fidelity, um, sorry, your virtual design, let me say. So like, where's your, where's your own page going to look? How is your own page going to look like? Where's going to be your status bar? Your evil section, where are they going to look like? Is it going to be at the left? Is it going to be at the right? The avatar, where is it going to look? Where is it going to be? Is it going to be at the center? So that is the reason why doing wireframe and that's why it's actually imperative for US design. And the point is that when you fail to do a wireframing, you might end up building something that is not it's not solving the problem. And also the same thing when you fail to have your future architecture, you might end up not giving what users need. So I think that's all I have. If any have if I have any other question, you can still talk. Okay, so there is no other question for today. A wrap for the day, and we really want to appreciate you, Ayo, for your time and your experience sharing with us. Note, we are not paying these speakers to be here. They have their time. They actually volunteer. They actually volunteer their time to sorry, come and sorry, teach. Let me, let me, let, sorry, sorry. Let me, let me say something. Okay, okay. for for. For those of because I, I used to get a lot of DM like, oh, this probably I'll be designing UI for one year and I've not been doing stuff, my design are not good. There is no any direct way to the UI, sorry, to the UI US. There's no direct way to the UI US. Forget about 
uh, we talked about the process. We talked about the process. That is are the process in the design. But then the secret is that there's no direct way to the UI US. So you don't, the point is that, are you solving the problem that you want to solve? Is this problem solving the problem? Is it, is it, is it, is it, so is the product solving the problem of the user? That's what should be in the back of your mind when you are designing. So there's no direct way to, the, to this US. So don't let anybody probably, anybody say, oh, you need to do this into that. It's a lie. There's no direct way to this, to the old UI US uh, of a thing. Just ensure the endeavor that you understand the problem you are trying to solve. Understanding the problem you are trying to solve, that's just the major thing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aya, for. Uh, okay, like I said, um, these um, designers, they volunteer their time to be a part of this, uh, this uh, UX design bootcamp. And trust me, they don't have all the time. And this is a big one for the community. We have had um, three speakers for the past three days. They all have their time. Their time is very precious. Their time are, they, 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 they pay for their time actually, but they do this for the community. So please, um, I don't know if I, you can, you said you are not seeing the chat. You would have dropped your um, Twitter handle so everybody can just go and also follow and appreciate just the way they do for others. Trust me, I, they are, I, they... I, I can actually see chat, but the last time I, the, the last chat I saw here was 39 minutes ago. That is for this chat. This chat okay, so, so just drop it. Let's see if we can see it. Okay. Well, okay. Do I even know my Twitter and your fans? Let me share for it. Don't really. Let's just my turn, you. Okay, I think that's local dev. Okay. Let's drop it there. You, you want to see it now? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like we said, you can go also on Twitter, follow this handle as well as follow the um the the community handle as well. Feel to to talk about that's the way sometimes when we go on twitter yes. in, in normality we just click on the hashtag and we'll see that tweeted for that day so follow the trend on twitter so you can go do the hashtag um put a screenshot of your screen or something talk about the u.s design bootcamp and talk about the two and also um yeah you can share to your linkedin as well you can share to your linkedin I, I think i will be sending out the link for the day four for this tonight so we can actually join early and i think people join mostly the time like five minutes or ten minutes before the time but i will send that email for so you're checking to your email before 10 o'clock or 11 i should send that that email for the for tomorrow and please come early tomorrow and prepare we also have other speakers that will be joining us tomorrow. So please, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for being a part of the UX UI, uh, UX Bootcamp um, from the Friends of Figma Portal Codes. And trust me, we are going to have a good section for the next two days. The next two days are also loaded. So please join us um, for the next two days. And on Saturday, we have a, we have a um, design sprint. We're also thinking of holding it online as well, the design sprint. We're also thinking of holding it uh, for the Figma, for the this platform, we can have a breakout section, like putting people in groups, like persons in a group to do a design, to do a challenge. So be prepared. We can pair you with anybody on a Saturday to do that sprint. So it's a challenge. We'll do the sprint and we'll also post it on Twitter and other handles. So be prepared for that uh, sprint on Saturday both online we are going to be doing it online so um is a maybe a two hours or three hours section but it's a sprint we all will give you a topic then you pair with a group you can communicate just the way everybody will have the, the access to the microphone you can communicate with your group member and are you in Porta court you're asking if the print is physical we have it we have an online own as well so we'll give details sprint on saturday it will come I mean, on friday to come in as it will come in as a, an email on friday so we will all prepare for the sprint so thank you so much again once more for joining us 
um, for the UXI UX Design Bootcamp from Friends of Figma for Tarkot. See you again tomorrow by 7 p.m. Please don't, don't waste time because you might miss a lot if you waste time. Thank you. See you. So you can just drop off.